Grandma, I know I just saw you at Thanksgiving, but I didn't get a chance to update you on what I'm learning in school. This week, we talked about saturated fat and trans fat and how they relate to coronary heart disease. I figured you would be interested in hearing all about it, considering our family history of heart disease and that little scare you had in the spring. So let's get to it. First, saturated fat is typically a solid at room temperature, and it lacks the double carbon um, bonds between the atoms. So it is saturated in hydrogen. Um, saturated fat is normally seen in things like meat, including beef and pork and lamb. It's in lard and cream and butter and cheese and most fried foods. So yeah, all of those delicious things we love to eat, all saturated fat. Now, saturated fat does play a major role in the phospholipid membrane of our cells, but it can also harm, harm, harm to our bodies. Simply put, put, saturated fat can cause our LDL cholesterol levels the bad cholesterols to rise and put it at risk for plaque buildup in our arteries around the heart. This leads to coronary heart disease, heart attacks, and you know, all those scary things. Now, the USDA states that Americans should consume less than 10% of their calories from saturated fat and replace them with monounsaturated or polyunsaturated fats. And that is because those are typically associated with lower blood cholesterol levels and also decreased risk for heart disease. Now, if only things were just that simple. Saturated fat is much more complex than that. Now, while research does show that saturated fats can cause total cholesterol level increases and LDL levels to rise, it can also cause HDL cholesterol, the good cholesterol, levels to rise as well. And that's a good thing because then the LDL to HDL ratio is smaller and it decreases and decreases our risk for heart disease. But to make matters worse, they're not, there are different types of saturated fats, but not all researchers can agree on which one's the worst, so it just makes it more complicated. Now, it is suggested that levels of saturated fats, trans fats, and cholesterol should be be decreased, those levels should be, that we eat should be decreased. But saturated fat has been the main target for intervention because Americans consume saturated fat in a much greater quantity than trans fat and cholesterol. Now, trans fat, what is that you ask? Well, that's a great question. Trans fats are artificially made fats that are created by adding hydrogen to liquid vegetable oils to make them more solid. Trans fats typically come from cakes, cookies, bread, animal products, and margarine. You know a product can, will contain trans fat when partially hydrogenated oils are on the label. Now, trans fats add to coronary heart disease risk by raising LDL levels, lowering HDL levels, and increasing small dense LDL levels, as well as increasing inflammation of the vessels and platelet aggregation. So did hearing all of this make you want to change your diet or regret your Thanksgiving meal? I know thinking about fat and learning about fat is never fun. It's just kind of depressing. But it's important to know so we can protect ourselves from these diseases that we can prevent. Well, we only have a few more weeks before school ends. And I've had a lot of fun telling you about all the things we've learned. And hopefully we can continue to learn them and, you know, make our health better. Bye, Grandma.